We've got a long legacy um, of asbestos use. Everybody in the room should be more aware of that. And within the redevelopment world, we're starting to look at more and more at these sorts of sites, reusing them and redeveloping them. That means that some of the industries where asbestos was heavily used, including the asbestos manufacturing industry, those sorts of sites are obviously high risk, um, potential issues may exist. But there are also an awful lot of sites which fall into these bottom two categories. Sites where buildings that contained asbestos have been demol demolished, particularly historically where the asbestos wasn't all removed first or wasn't adequately removed. Or sites where soil from those previous sites has been moved around. Uh, we've worked on quite a few sites where brown, blue asbestos is being found on de in housing developments, back gardens. Not necessarily at huge quantities, but in soils nonetheless. And the only realistic place that those come from is where they imported soil during the development. So there's, there's three main pillars to the legal issues that we have and we're trying to negotiate our way through. The first is occupational exposures, health and safety legislation, particularly control of asbestos regs. The first thing to, to just point out is that we have a definition in there. It talks about applying to premises, and a premises legally includes the land within the curtilage of that premises. But an awful lot of the guidance talks about the building. A lot of what we do is about managing asbestos within the building and not man thinking about the soils that are outside, probably because there's greater risks to the people working in the buildings. But we don't really know, we'll talk about non-occupational buildings in a minute, about non-occupational risks. So if I'm working on some of these sites, I need to be thinking about, well, what risks do my workers have? How can I do those assessments? What is the risk from an asbestos in soil? What guidance have I got? And I have got very little to work on in terms of how I can apply um, the current regulations, the current ACOP, to soils. I've had a quick look at the, the draft ACOP uh, a couple of weeks ago, and the only mention of, of asbestos in soil appears to be one line that says we're not going to mention asbestos in soil, which isn't hugely helpful from my side of the fence. If you're at a commercial and industrial development, that's sort of simpler sometimes from my point of view, because after I finish developing it, the control of asbestos regs still apply. It's still an occupational building. People are still being um, exposed occupationally, and therefore there's things I need to do. The biggest problem is with private houses, and we're building a lot of private houses. We need to build a lot of houses. But as soon as I leave the site, after I've finished building them and passed them on for sale, the car doesn't really apply anymore. It's a domestic premises. I can do what I like in my bit, uh, house. Okay. So how do we protect residents? And that is what local authorities expect developers to be able to demonstrate that they've done. They've considered asbestos risks and they've dealt with them.